Hello, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Roxanne. If it's your first time here, welcome. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the books that I read in the month of August. It was my birthday month, just FYI. Um, and I didn't do too shabby. I didn't do too shabby. I don't remember the order in which I read these, so let's just get right into it. I read My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I liked it a lot, not as much as Rebecca, but it was good. I loved being back in her type of storytelling so atmospheric so engaging it really grips you and this is i think the perfect example at least for me of how you can love a book love its writing and read it all the way and be engaged in the story even when you don't like the main character i didn't give a flying fuck about philip like i could care less but it was so interesting seeing how his emotions changed how he changed as a character how he treated everyone around him what the fuck was gonna happen with him I was super engaged in the story. I really, really, really liked it. Um, and I liked how it just kept you guessing. You didn't really know what the, f at least I didn't always 100% know what was going on. And that, I, that made me like it even more. I thought it was really, really great, really engaging, atmospheric, beautiful storytelling. I think I gave it like a 4.5 or a four out of five stars. I also read this beautiful edition of Pride and Prejudice. You guys know how I feel about Pride and Prejudice. And if you don't know, for some reason, I love Pride and Prejudice. Just love it. So look at this beautiful illustrated edition. I got this one at the Book Depository. I think it's like 18 bucks, something like that. But it's, it's a naked hardcover. Look at these end papers. Beautiful. Plus it came with this really pretty bookmark, which I'm, I've already shown you guys before in another video. And yeah, I mean, I loved it just as much as I did the every other time I've read Pride and Prejudice. I did find like two or three typos though, so that was annoying. But alas, Galileo. Sorry, he's shaking my table. I read two nonfictions this past month. I'm very proud of myself. The first was The Politics of Che Guevara by Samuel Farber. And it was okay. It was a quick fast-paced read about his uh, just like his life and his ideals and the things he wrote about and did i just found that i wasn't as interested in Che as i thought i was going to be um so it was okay three out of five stars i'm glad i read it because i know more about him now but that's like it really but i i then read open veins of latin america by Eduardo Galeano and loved it. This was a this was such a good book. It was so well researched, so engaging. It was a great mix of um accessible and academic. It gave you a lot of context about it gave you a lot of context with regards to the state of Latin America and it really puts a lot of things in perspective for you and I think it was great. I really wish that, I actually don't know if he's still alive or not, to be quite honest, but if he is, I would love sort of like an extended or a modern version of this because this one stops in 1977. Um, I think it was originally published in 1970 and then there he went in like seven years later and added another chapter to it, which is this edition and yeah it was just it was really really good it will make you very angry but i think it's something that everyone should read and know about so five out of five stars for that one and then like three out of five stars for the chill one i'm not sure if i said that i read ink and bone the first book in the great library series by rachel kane and i loved it this was the first way that i read in a while it's a fantasy YA series i think it's gonna be like five books and I've had it for a really long time. I actually contemplated getting rid of it for a, for a little bit. Super glad I didn't. And I loved it. I'm super glad that I did. It has a gay character. It has a hijabi character. It has a Spanish character, like from Spain. It has Asian characters. It's amazing. I loved it. Um, it is about this alternate world in which the uh, the library of alexandria survived and now they control all knowledge yes thank you then i the last book that i read this past month that i loved oh i think i gave that one a five out of five stars i'm pretty sure 
Another five star for me was Sabi by Philippa Rice. This book was the cutest, most adorable thing I've ever read. I mean, look at these illustrations. They're so cute. Uh, yes, I loved it. I had seen so many of her illustrations on Tumblr and every time I always reblogged it because they just, oh, uh, they were so cute. And they reminded me a lot of my partner and I. So yeah, I just, when I saw it at the bookstore, I was like, I need to get it because I mean, 15 bucks, which is expensive for a tiny little book like this, but so worth it, in my opinion. I just, I love this book so much. It really just like completely just covered my little heart with warmth and love, and I loved it. It was great. Um, and yeah, the illustrations are super cute. They're all like red and black and white. And I love them. I love this book. Can't get enough of it. I recommend it to everybody. Another naked hardback. It was great. Overall, I had a really, really good book. I good book. <laughs> good reading month. I think I gave... Oh! I almost forgot. So I started to read The Night of the Virgin by Elliot Turner. I was sent this for review by the, by the authors like publicist or something i can't believe i almost forgot about this i dnf'd it like 50 pages in or something like that it's not well written i didn't give a flying fuck about the story uh or the characters so you know how i was telling you that my cousin rachel is a good example of how you cannot care not like a character but still be engaged in the story and still love it and still want to read it bad example of that so bad i didn't i didn't care about the characters the story wasn't engaging it felt like he was trying way too hard he used the word sans like a thousand times in just the 50 pages that i read like s-a-n-s -S. and it just sounds like when someone is trying to sound smarter than they are or a better writer than they are it's it takes more than using certain words there's one i i have dog-eared this i don't dog-ear my books so that should tell you how annoying this made me oh this is how he describes somebody's accent the southern intonation and third person a plural sent shivers up his spine he found adorable the way she ate the g at the end of garen's and omitted the s entirely from certain contractions who the fuck thinks that way? Like, unless you are super grammar geek and that's in your entire life, your career, you eat, sleep, drink, everything grammar, and that's probably how you think about people's speech and their way of, of, of speaking and accents and things like that. No one fucking thinks this. Oh, I love the way that she omits the G's. No, no, that's it sounds pretentious. It sounds annoying. And I was like, fuck this shit, nope. Um, the guy's a douchebag. The way he breaks up with his girlfriend is, ugh. It had a lot of potential, I think, to be a really cool sport Latinx story that could have touched upon a lot of aspects of the community and of the culture. And I think and it was trying to do that. I saw that it was trying to do that for sure, but I just... I didn't like it, I wasn't engaged, and I'm past the point of forcing myself to read books just because I have them. Um, there are so many amazing books to read out there that I'm not gonna make myself read one that I find to be bad. I'm, I'm really not, so I used to not ever let myself DNF books way past that point. Um, I want to do a I want to do a video about like how my reading has evolved and how booktube has made my reading evolve and that's definitely one of the aspects that I would touch upon is how I'm now realizing there are so many books out there so many great amazing reads that why would I force myself to read a book that I don't like just to say that I finished it or just to say that I read it like it goes there are so many more important books out there so many more important things to worry about out there 
than just saying, hey, you know, I read that book. Um, for me personally, obviously, if you want to make yourself read a book, the, the, by fucking all means, do it. Do whatever the fuck you want. I am all for that. But me personally, no, no, man. And I, and I feel bad because I was excited about this book and they sent it to me for review. But I ain't got, this was my review. I ain't got nothing else to say. Um, I think I might have already put that on Goodreads. If not, I will probably go and do that. But yeah, that was my reading month in August. I read one, two, three, four, five, six, and DNF'd one. So not too bad. Not too bad of a month. Hopefully I can read just as much, if not more, next month. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've read this past month. Let me know what you read this past month. And I'll let you know that I love you and appreciate you very, very much. Mwah. Oh, also, this is what I was looking at the entire time I was filming. Because look at my cat. He's so fucking cute. He's very sleepy right now. Say hi, bud. It's really windy outside. So he is, uh, the sound keeps distracting him. But look at, he wants to go to sleep. Go to sleep, buddy.